Hi everybody, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Amelia Draper. I'm a meteorologist at NBC Washington here in Washington, D.C. I also do the radio at times on WTOP Radio. I want to talk to you today about a few things. First of all, what is the difference between a watch and a warning? Then, how do I forecast the weather? I went to school for meteorology, but how do we know what the weather is going to be? Not just what's happening right now, but into the future. And then, how do I take my forecast from what I write down here on my forecasting sheet and broadcast it to you live? Obviously, I'm work from home right now. I'm literally sitting at my kitchen table. If there's severe weather at times, I do, though, head back into the station. And when the coronavirus is over, I will be back in the station. So we're also going to do something fun with the green screen that I recorded before the coronavirus happened. First though, let's talk about the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch means watch out. Something that we're forecasting might happen later in the day. A warning means that what we forecasted is happening. It's serious and you need to seek shelter and take the weather seriously. Another way to think about it, think about it like baking cookies. When you have all of the ingredients for the cookies but they're not made yet, that's a watch. Once those cookies are made, it's a warning. And actually right now, I'm in the middle of a broadcast, but I wanted to take some time out to talk to you about meteorology. So we have some severe weather on the radar right now. Everywhere in pink is under a severe thunderstorm watch, so that means everybody needs to stay weather ready out there this evening. And the areas here in orange, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. This is where I'm tracking severe thunderstorms producing gusty damaging winds, heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning, and even some hail. The tool I'm using right here is the radar. Our radar here in Washington is located out in Sterling, Virginia. You can see the beam there spinning around. As the beam goes out, it picks up the rain and the wind direction as well. Sends that information back to us. And the wind direction, it's so important, it lets us know if there's rotation in the atmosphere. So not only does the radar allow us to see rain, snow, sleet, and freezing rain, but also with that rotation in these warmer months, we want to be on the lookout for any possible tornadoes out there. So that's how we're using our radar. Now, before I talk about more of the tools I'm using, let's do a little basic geography because so much of the weather is about geography. So here's a map of the United States, country to the north, country to the south of us, and then two bodies of water. So what country is north of the United States? If you said Canada, you're right. What country is to the south? Mexico. And this ocean, the one closest to Washington, is the Atlantic. And the ocean back to the west, California is out there. That's going to be the Pacific Ocean. So let me draw our compass rose on here too, because that is a lot about the weather. Where the weather is right now and where it's traveling to. So of course, here we have north. And by the way, I'm drawing on our graphic system. So this is what you see on TV too. We can do so much with the system. So north, east, south, which I'm gonna have to get another drawing tool and that's gonna be red, and west. Okay, so here's our compass rose. Now, in the United States, most of the time, our weather travels in a certain direction, from somewhere to somewhere. Using our compass rows, take a guess at what direction that might be. Okay, if you were thinking that our weather most often travels from west to east, you're exactly right. You can give yourself a pat on the back out there. So most times our weather here in the United States is traveling from west to east. Now that's not always the case. Take tonight for instance. I'm seeing thunderstorms sinking down from the north, coming from Pennsylvania, moving into Maryland, West Virginia, and Virginia. In addition to that, as I clear off all of my writing on here and add in the satellite and radar, you'll see that we also have a tropical storm out there. This is Tropical Storm Laura that's in the Gulf right now. This is expected to make landfall somewhere around the Texas-Louisiana border and then circle toward Washington a few days from now. So again, not all of our weather travels from west to east, but most of the time our weather travels from west to east. So knowing that, I already have a pretty good idea when I'm just looking at the satellite and radar imagery right now 
what we can expect in the next few days. Okay, so knowing that our weather travels from west to east, as a meteorologist, I'm not looking at this map and just seeing tropical storm and rain and lack of weather. I'm seeing pressure, and in weather, there are two kinds of pressure. You're going to have high pressure, and you're going to have low pressure. Do you think that Laura is high pressure or low pressure, the tropical system? If you think that Laura is low pressure, you would be absolutely right. What about the storms, let me draw that a little bit better, what about the storms that are moving into the area that I was just talking about right now? Do you think that's low pressure or high pressure? That's going to be low pressure. We look back to the west and we see not much going on out here. Record heat is actually happening. Do you think that that's high pressure or low pressure? Well, if you said high pressure, you're exactly correct. So most of the time when we're seeing storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, snow, sleet, our weather, that's going to be low pressure. Most of the time when we have a lack of weather, that's going to be your high pressure. With high pressure, we can get heat waves. We can get poor air quality out there. Again, most of the time when we're tracking weather, storms, hurricanes, anything like that, rain, that's going to be low pressure. High pressure is typically when we have a lack of weather. So why is this? Well, when you have your low pressure, what's happening, you have an area of low pressure out there, and let's draw this accurately, we'll draw area of low pressure here in the Gulf. What's happening with low pressure is at the surface, air is coming in. Now I want you to think of your water cycle. As that air goes in, it's forced up. So you're getting your evaporation, your condensation, and eventually your precipitation. Now with high pressure, you have air going out at the surface. So that air is sinking, so it can't condense, so you don't get your cloud cover. That's why typically we have a lack of weather with high pressure. So with high pressure, you have air sinking in the middle, going out at the surface. So that is how air moves around high and low pressure. Okay, so now we have a general idea of high and low pressure, the fact that most of the time our weather moves from west to east. Now I wanna put a forecast together. How do I do that? Well, I use my weather tools. I talked about the radar. I've showed you the satellite imagery here. We have satellites in outer space that are constantly monitoring not just the United States, but the entire world as well. Satellites, radar, airplanes, weather balloons, all taking in weather information and feeding this information into supercomputers. These supercomputers process the information and then come out with computer models, predictions as to what they think the forecast is going to be. Here's a look at one computer model I use. This is called the GFS. This is an American computer model. And if you look really closely here, you'll see L's and H's on the map, that's going to be our low pressure, where we get our weather, and our high pressure, typically where we get our lack of weather. So what I do is I go up to the top of my map here, and I just go out in time, and I see how this model is thinking our areas of high pressure and low pressure are going to move over the next seven days. There's other information on here like temperature, spin in the atmosphere, humidity, moisture in the atmosphere, is it rain, is it snow, all of that information is on this computer model. Now I don't look at just one computer model, I look at many computer models and then make my forecast. I put my forecast down here on my forecast sheet, pretty much every meteorologist has their own, and then I broadcast the weather. I'm literally sitting here at my kitchen table right now because I'm work from home with the coronavirus. I'm broadcasting over in an iPhone. Behind the iPhone, there's a light, and I have this TV monitor to help me tell the story. Before the coronavirus and when the coronavirus is over, or if there is severe weather that merits me going into the studio, I'll be in the studio. And when that happens, I do the weather in front of a green screen. Before the coronavirus, I put together a video what it's like to be at the green screen because it can be a little weird especially the first few times so check it out hey guys when you're watching the weather at home this is what you see weather graphics behind me and us the meteorologists telling you what the weather's going to be but what does it look like behind the scenes well 
it looks like this. Notice we're standing in front of a blank screen. It's completely green. Because of that, we can never wear green as meteorologists. So how do I know where to point to tell you what the weather is going to be? Well, take a look. I have a little bit of help. I have a monitor over here that's showing me in my graphics. I also have a monitor in front of me. So when I'm looking at that camera, I'm also looking at my graphics and that's how I know where to point. And I have one more monitor over here on this side and that's helping me out as well. So at home, when you're seeing us do the weather, we're actually using the monitors on either side and in front of us to help us point. Now the anchors actually have words in those monitors. We call that the teleprompter, but here with weather, we're just using our graphics. So what does it feel like to point to the green screen? Because at first it can feel a little bit tricky and I'm gonna show you what that feels like. So we're gonna bring in intern Bria to help us out. Come on in here. So this is really fun and you guys are gonna do this. I'm gonna show you how. What I want you to do, hold your hands out. Okay, flip your hands over. Grab them and clasp your fingers tightly. Pull it up through. Okay, now I'm not going to touch Bria's hands. I'm just gonna point to a finger that I want her to move. Okay, move this finger. It's <laughs> a little tricky. That one? Kind of got it. <laughs> okay, let's try another one. Move this finger. <laughs> so when you're pointing at the green screen, the feeling is so similar. It feels kind of backwards in your head, right? Yeah, it does. So that's what it feels like when you're pointing at the green screen. Now it's your time to give it a try. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the weather, how our weather travels typically in the United States, the difference between low pressure, high pressure, and how I go from making a forecast to getting that forecast on television.